You are the key, Triss, to rescue what little civilization we have left. The next chapter in the Divergent series is called Insurgent. The heroes, what are they called? Triss, Triss, Triss and, four. and Four. are being hunted by a government bent on keeping strict social order. Yeah. Interesting Movie names, reviewer right? er yeah. extraordinaire, Thank Aaron you, Dyson. appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Triss and Four, kind of the main characters in this. And this world is interesting. Just like those names are interesting names, uh -huh. this is a really interesting world that I they've got go going. I was going to go with Triss, but you know. You got it, in the Divergent series. And uh, you know what? This one, this is one of those movies I walk out going, you know, that was probably better than it had any right to be. You know, like I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, had a decent enough time, and I felt kind of the same way about the first one. It does fall a lot into kind of the same, you know, falls that a lot of those young adult novel things fall mm -hmm. into. But, uh, but at the end of the day, there's, there's some fun to be had here. So tell us again kind of like just the synopsis of oh, what sure. it's, it's kind Without of this, giving anything away. Right, it's this sci-fi kind of future world where it's divided into factions. So you're divided into groups based on kind of your primary philosophy. So, you know, one group is all about kindness. One group is all about aggression. One group, so it kind of divides it that way. And then what happens when people don't fall into those easily divided categories? So mm -hmm. you can kind of see there's some deeper themes that could be there as well right. in that way. I think one of the reasons this movie succeeds, I want to touch on the acting a little bit, because Shailene Woodley stars in this. She is kind of becoming like the next version of like Jennifer Lawrence, mm -hmm. where she, you know, who started in the Hunger Games and, you know, turned out to be this amazing actress. I think Shailene is really, really good, and she shows it here, so I think that's good. Plus, it's got Miles Teller in it, who you may remember from Whiplash uh, this last Oscar season, and he's kind of um, one of those stars that's rising up as well. I should probably know who that is. Yeah, but he's been in a few things, and he's one of those people who, if you don't know now, you probably will in five years. Like, you can just feel like Keep his, his career... Keep his name in your Exactly. Brain. His career is kind of moving that way. Okay. So, and people have been a, a fan of the, of the series, I mm -hmm. suppose, yeah. Yeah, and it's one of those that, if you are a fan of the series, of course, you're going to really like it. But I should also say, if you don't know the series and you haven't seen the first movie, you will be lost in this one. It, you need to have that point of reference from the first movie to really enjoy this Good one, in my know. opinion. Okay. So give us best, worst, and final grade. Absolutely. Best thing, I said the acting, uh, the rising stars. You know, I mentioned Shailene Woodley and Miles uh -huh. Teller. Worst thing, I said uh, soap opera effect. And I didn't get into that too much, but it's just kind of sappy and schmaltzy in uh -huh. a lot of ways, which a lot of these kind of young adult fiction novels tend to go into, and so there's that. Overall, still pretty good. I said about a B minus. Okay, B minus. Number two, in The Gunman, Sean Penn plays a sniper on a team of mercenaries. After he comes out of hiding, he finds himself the target of a hit squad. Mm -hmm. All right, so that one's kind of self-explanatory on what it's about, but Sean Penn and Thriller? Sean Penn in his first real kind of action movie, and I think he's serviceable in this. Unfortunately, the movie is not. It's pretty boring all the way through. When you look at what keeps your attention in a movie, right, it can be one of basically three things, either the characters, like mm -hmm. you're rooting for the characters to do something, a relationship that you're rooting for, or like plot progression. You want to know how the story goes. Right. None of those things are interesting in this movie. The characters aren't interesting, the relationships aren't interesting, the plot's not really that interesting, it feels very obvious. So overall, you get about an hour into this movie and you still don't really know what you're rooting for, like you, how you want it to end or right. anything. So because of that, it just gets boring and there's not really much to engage your mind as you're kind of sitting through it. Yeah, and then you look at your watch. A lot. Yeah, this is one of those, you know, check the time, see how much longer you have to have to put up with it kind of movies. All right, so best, worst, and final grade, which I think you just explained. Uh, pretty well, I think. Uh, best thing, I did say creative action. There are some moments of the action scenes that are interesting and feel a little fresh. Uh, as far as worst thing, I said care less. In other words, there's nothing to care about in this movie. And uh, then overall, I said a C minus. A little worse than average. Yep. Okay, so last week we told you about Aaron's blue shirt. Remember, we were like voting blue shirt or not. We mm -hmm. get a lot of you know, feedback on that blue it's, shirt. It's really interesting. And it's the results the main... are in, I guess? Well, we're, we're going through the end of the month, but uh, yeah, people are voting on Team Blue. They like the blue shirt. Really? 92% like of the poll. And I think a lot of that has to do with people saying, you know what, you be you. You just kind of do your thing. And you know, that, it, that it's not that a big of a deal to them. So it was really surprising to me because I thought, you know, it'd be one of those things because it's one of those comments that I get that people would be like, you know, let's change it up. Let's try something new. So. Right. I get that a lot, just so you know. I know and that's but kind sometimes of, you hear from the vocal minority. Yeah, and then I think that has a lot to do with it. And you know what I love in about life, this? In general, that's a good life lesson. I love that that is the majority. The, the majority is saying, you know what, you just do you. 
And that's not, you know, necessarily why we're tuning in anyway. So, and I think it's a good reminder for you and for others as well that that minority you hear that's, you know, kind of picking at appearance and those kind of things is a minority. It's not necessarily what the majority of people are, you know, kind of thinking about. So I think it's a good kind of awareness of kind of thinking, well, think twice before advice is Phil what I like to say, you know. Philosopher Aaron Dicer well, this morning. Yeah, sort <laughs> of. Okay, so you can still go vote. And then mm -hmm. he's going to go buy your vote. So whatever. That's you true. Know, Sometime in April, if team, if team New does win, I'll switch it up, you know, for at least a week. If Team Blue wins, who knows? Maybe we'll all wear black and blue for that week. Right. That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, through what? What's the last day of the month? End of the month. March. Yeah, it's yeah. next week. It's like oh, a week from now. Okay. Next Monday. Cool. Okay. Thanks, Aaron Dicer. We will be back one last time with Brandon. Stay with us.